The largest blackout in the history of the North American grid occurred on August 14, 2003. At 3.05 in the afternoon, a 345,000 volt transmission line was operating and tripped because it got too close to a tree. As that line tripped, about a half an hour later, another line tripped. About 15 minutes later, a third line tripped. The grid is designed to have resiliency into it through uh, safety margins and, and redundancy. But when you lose three transmission lines and then other things started to cascade, the system became unstable, went out of control, and, and it caused a blackout that affected 50 million people in the United States and Canada. Over 60,000 megawatts of load was interrupted on that day. Over 500 power plants were tripped offline. Economists have estimated that the impact was over $10 billion. Immediately after the blackout, a task force was formed to investigate the, the causes of the blackout. I was involved in looking at all of the information coming into the investigation team from all of the affected utilities. So it gave me a very good perspective on the overall picture. The blackout report included several recommendations. One is to have mandatory reliability standards. Two is to implement technology to improve situational awareness. Three is to address issues such as vegetation management and other issues to make those mandatory requirements. And then provide uh, greater training and awareness on the part of the grid operators so that they could learn the lessons from this event and apply it to their uh, operation procedures. So when I think about the power grid today compared to what it was 10 years ago on August 14, 2003, there are a tremendous amount of improvements that we've made, but I think there are still challenges that we have in operating the system. An important aspect of a reliable power system uh, going into the future is ensuring that it's robust and resilient. p works closely with DOE at conducting a wide range of research across transmission reliability, demand response, advanced grid modeling, energy storage, and cybersecurity. First, we're trying to add or enhance the capacity of operator tools to handle the variability of the new generation sources, such as wind and solar and demand response. All of these have certain uncertainties or variability that have to be accounted for, and we're building those into the tools. Secondly, as we get a high penetration of uh, clean generation and more consumer demand control, et cetera, we need a framework for optimizing the power system across traditional legacy systems and all of the new intelligence systems that are coming on board. Transactive energy is a concept developed at PNNL to engage buildings, homes, electric vehicles, industrial loads, generation, large generation, small distributed renewable generation, all supply and all demand on a level playing field that enables the system to optimize. The fundamental process is to leverage sensors and communication to communicate down throughout the system uh, what the opportunities are for the system to be reliable and, and affordable, and then for all of the loads of the system to communicate back up in terms of what they're either going to need or what they're willing to offer back to the system. We've made substantial progress over the last decade. We're going to open up new infrastructure by the end of this next year or two that will substantially transform our ability to see the system in real time and control it in ways that are much more productive and effective than they were historically. But that's just the beginning. We now, with this new information, have the ability to open up whole new paradigms for operating the system, to begin to ask the question, are there better ways perhaps to control the system that give us a more effective economy, more security in the future? And I think most importantly, we now have the ability to engage consumers in our energy and electricity decisions and choices day to day than they've ever had before.